The Gold Coast Population Boom. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Still drinking my daily stein of coffee, I thought we would have a look at this article about development on the Gold Coast as its population is expected to grow significantly. Now before we go through this, let's jump over here and just look at a selection of images. This is what you think of when you think of Gold Coast, or at least probably the tourists and the international. It's, it's about an hour's drive from Brisbane. Traditionally, it was the weekend surf beach for many people in Brisbane. There used to be a train line that went all the way to Southport and people would catch the train there from Brisbane and then enjoy the beach and the water. A lot hasn't changed. Now you just drive along the highway going past the multi-million dollar Gold Coast sign out of streetlights on the side of the road. I will link to that video right about here and you will see what I'm talking about. <laughs> just, just insane. I'm putting that time in. Now, let's jump and have a look at this article to, to see what the take is. So Gold Coast has lost its mojo as development and population boom throws character into question. Now, when I first read this title, I thought character, I, I think, you know, dodgy, <laughs> dodgy real estate, spruikers selling land under the water in, in the bay. I, I think, you know, a Hollywood knockoff uh, movie world type people, you know, dodgy film producers. And yes, yeah, so yeah, because I, I mean, I grew up on the Gold Coast, guys. <laughs> so maybe I've got a different perspective. The Gold Coast may just be the urban equivalent of human growth serum. Over the next two decades, development there will be fueled by an expected population boom of 350,000 people, more than half of the city's current population. Now, the question I have to you is what are they going to do? What are they going to do for employment down there? What industry is down on the Gold Coast, guys? A lot of it's tourism. A lot of it's tourism. And there's, what, is, what else? What else? Services for the tourist industry, services for the government authorities. You know, yeah, there's a, there's a reason why Rachel and I wanted to settle in Brisbane as opposed to the Gold Coast. What well, so, but with growth comes growing pains. Once upon a time, you were able to walk along the Gold Coast and speak to people because it was a holiday atmosphere. Burley resident Christine Jensen said it's changed now because we've got too much investment in high rise development. OK, interesting, interesting point. Now, do you think do you think a change in people just walking past each other and, and saying hello, do you think that's got to do with a holiday atmosphere? Or do you think it has to do with perhaps these little devices? You don't talk to people when they stare at their phones. Have you been on a train recently? Because I caught, I remember, I used to catch the train up and down from the Gold Coast. And there you would, you would talk to people occasionally. Now, not at all. Everyone's on their phone just staring there. And, Frankly, I'm the same too, because there are a lot of weirdos on those trains <laughs> sometimes. So yeah, that's one take that it's you know, no longer a holiday atmosphere. But I'd also say technology and just the way people are these days. So as the population builds along one of Australia's most iconic tourist destinations, some locals are worried it could wipe out the very character that makes the Gold Coast unique. So it'll be unattractive and overpopulated. I isn't it like a try-hard version of uh, Miami in America or California? Ms. Jensen was one of 200 people who attended a community, pe sorry, a community meeting this week in Palm Beach, where locals voiced their concerns over the council's proposed city plan. It seems to me architects and town planners just decide to put a high rise up without even looking at the area, she said. Kim Parker, who has lived on the Gold Coast for 20 years, said the area had become overpopulated and unattractive. The character that has changed the most has been the little old buildings that have been removed, spare blocks filled up completely. Yet, yeah, um, yes, this is what happens when a nation's population grows by a quarter in 20 years. Okay, guys, this is what happens. This is your quality of life is going to change. You're not going to have empty land. You're not going to have empty blocks. This is why all your houses on Gold Coast have gone up in value. It's not because of the miraculous Gold Coast economy and people getting attracted to the beaches. No, it's because there's been a population boom and a huge demand for the property. So we're not against development, 
But a lot of the builders we're buildings we're seeing are just horrible brick blocks of concrete with ugly black and grey verandas. We can still fit people in, but we don't have to do it that way that crowds out character. See, so this is an interesting take. It's turning into a critique of the development. But, I mean, I would rather, frankly, I'd rather have a, a brick building with no construction issues, but the Gold Coast is going to be ramped with construction issues. We saw in another video uh, up in Southport, there were issues there on one of the sites, and I will link to that one as well. We can look at that. Uh, because it's not, Gold Coast is not immune to the issues that we've been seeing around the country, not by any measure. So how do you plan a city's character? Former Gold Coast architect, Philip Folland, so, former, I know Philip, I, I worked with him when he was the, uh, the Queensland government architect. Has he retired, is he? Or maybe he's no longer the Gold Coast city architect. Said the city has lost its mojo in relation to its character. It used to be a city that was on holidays. And our buildings look like that with less inhibited color schemes. Now we've got only gray and white buildings. He said the council's proposed city plan, the way it intends to accommodate population growth, has taken a one-size-fits-all approach at the detriment to diversity of suburban character. That's the one thing with these town plans. As a designer, they can be quite prescriptive and a real pain in the ass if you want to do something a little different or a little unique. Mr. Folland said, high density developments in areas like Surface Paradise had changed the city's reputation over recent decades. That's our identity as a city nationally and internationally, tall buildings by the sea, he said. We're not looking very creative at how we amalgamate sites to do high density, low rise, because there's a simplistic view of getting a small site, do a high rise and have a little bit of green around it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, surface is just crazy when you go through there now with all the high rises, it's unrecognizable. We haven't stepped out of the comfort zone as a development industry. Well, they're not going to. It's, it's all about financial returns, you know. So where are we going to put all these people? They need to, if, if council has a say, what they do is they can put their restrictions on it or they need to give incentives to it. Incentives to people, maybe reduced taxes or stamp duty or something to encourage develop it maybe maybe the government thinks they're stepping back but you know so where are we going to put all these people the gold coast current growth spur is not its first with a population doubling between 1960 and 1970 on the back of tourism the gold coast is very famous for being sort of unplanned or a badly planned city with the university senior lecturer in urban planning asin deborah Krokat said sorry i butchered your name there all the plans we make for the gold coast happen to be reactive to the growth after it occurs, and reactive plans can never be as good as proactive plans, the doctor said. This means that rather than having a clear central business district, the city now has long strips of commercial activity mixed into residential activity. Well, yeah, yeah, it is, it is it's an odd city. It's a long strip. That makes it good to do Uber on when I do, because it's just three big roads going all the way up. You drive on those. The doctor said, it is uh, said a not in my backyard type of opposition to medium density housing developments was common, but the solution was not just expanding housing estates on the city's northern fringe. Those areas are low lying areas, and those areas will be subject to storm surges and flooding and sea level rises, and those areas are not well serviced with public transport, she said. Oh no, we just bought there. I'm not too worried. I'm not too worried. Uh, so how to make this high density development acceptable to the public is one challenge that council will have to deal with. I am more concerned with what these people are all going to be doing for a living down there. What are they all going to be doing, guys? Another 350,000 people on the Gold Coast. Let, let me know in the comments if you have an idea, okay? Because I can't think of anything, you know? So different suburbs and different characters. Local area plans designed to match compatible developments to the character of individual areas have been removed from the council's proposed new approach. What local area plans did was probably just add another layer of confusion where people didn't necessarily have a single point of truth to go on, City of Gold Coast Planning Chairman Cameron Caldwell said. Yeah, yep. There was nothing that was in local area plans that couldn't be incorporated into the city plan as it is now. Yeah. I've got, I agree with that. It's just another layer of, of frustration. While we remove local area plannings, we haven't removed local area plannings. 
Huh. Okay, they've okay, they've still got local requirements, but they haven't removed it from the plans. Um, Councillor Caldwell said the city plan was in line with the state government's overarching regional plan for population growth and gave the greatest protection in relation to the character of each individual area. When you start running short of car parking capacity, when you start putting your site cover, uh, sorry, pushing your site cover and pushing your setbacks, that's when you clearly have a built form that's not meant to fit on that block, he said. Surface Paradise, for example, has a very distinctive high-rise character. Majrabah has a completely different character. A high-rise clearly wouldn't be part of the large lot acreage kind of vibe that goes on in Majrabah. Yes, but no one would ever build a high-rise apartment at Majrabah. Why would you do it? Long-term vision needed. Doctor said that the Gold Coast has a lot more diverse economic functions than just tourism and so the city was beginning to mature. Really? It's bigger than Canberra, it's bigger than Hobart, these are capital cities. She said, what, what is? <laughs> How is it beginning to mature? The problem, she said, was Queensland incon Queensland's inconsistent approach to planning. It's very political, so it depends on which government is in power. We see cycles where there's some planning done, then another government comes in and undoes everything the other government has done on political reasons, ideological reasons. You'd have to think about 10 or 20 years at the minimum, make decisions for it and implement those. Well, yeah, that's the problem. You're always going to have that. So guys, what do you think? Do you think a huge boost in population to the Gold Coast is going to drive up all the property prices? Is this going to be the, the problem? Should we rush out and buy apartments on the Gold Coast, everyone? Or houses? Do you think the, the planning on the Gold Coast has been crazy? If you live on there, what do you reckon? What do you reckon, guys? You know, I I don't mind the Gold Coast, but there's nothing to do there. I don't. It's not as sophisticated a city as Brisbane, I'd say. Not by any measure. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to help me produce more content, I have a Patreon, subscribe style link below. I also have affiliate links where it doesn't cost you anything and I get a small reward. Every bit helps and I really appreciate it. Take care, everyone. I'll talk to you later.